Welcome to my series on Python functions. Today we're looking at the NumPy mesh grid function. I would say that the main use for this function would be in creating and plotting 2D functions or images. Let's get right into it. So we'll go over this notebook that I've prepared outlining everything that you can do with a mesh grid, all the important functionality of it, how to use it, and a couple examples as well. So I'm just going to import NumPy, which is where the mesh grid comes from, matplotlib, to do a little bit of plotting just for some examples. And I'll be using this plotting style. So I'll start by going over a few of the fundamental components you need to build a mesh grid. And so usually you'd have an array of equally spaced values, and there's two ways to do that in Python. There's the arrange function and linspace. So for example, here I'm creating an array that goes from 0 to 10 in steps of 1. That's what a range does. I create that array and then I display it. And I go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It doesn't include 10 steps of 1. The other way to do that is linspace. I could say I want to go from 0 to 1 and have 20 steps. And I want an array with 20 values like that. Um, in fact, it looks a little bit nicer if I have 21. And it goes 0, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, all the way from 0 to 1. Uh, 0 to 1, yeah, in steps of uh, 0 0.05, but I said I want 21 values, so it automatically uh, computes that step size. And so with these arrays like this, for example, here's some values in x, I can define a one-dimensional function and plot it. For example, this is my domain in x, then I can get some y values. So here I define a 1D function, f of x equals something. Here it's x squared times sine of 10x. And so I just take this equally spaced array of values, plug it in, get another array, which is called f. f is just some other values, and I can plot x versus f, and I get the following plot here. So that's sort of how you do things in one dimension. The question then is, how do you do that in two dimensions? Well, the answer is the mesh grid function. So there's the NumPy mesh grid, and it's used primarily for creating and plotting 2D functions, f of x, y. Of course, you've seen that in math and also generating combinations of numbers, permutations, combinatorics. There's a little bit of that, that you can do with the mesh grid as well. So the question is, well, how do you create a 2D function f of x, y to actually plot it? Well, you might think to do it this way. This is the wrong way. You could say, all right, I want uh, values of x, 100 values of x between 0 and 10, 100 values of y between 0 and 10, right? Then I have my domain and x and y, you might think. I try to create a 2D function. Uh, this function is f of x, y is x squared plus y squared. But if I plot f, I just have a single sort of one dimensional function. And it's because it does element wise operations. For example, if I look at x and I look at y, the first element is 0 squared plus 0 squared. And the second element is this squared plus this squared. And it does that for all the elements of the array. But that's not what a 2D function is. A 2D function says, I want all possible values of x with all different possible values of y to create a function. Um, and I'll show you sort of how a mesh grid can do this. So for example, how do you create a mesh grid? Well, let's look at creating these arrays here. So I have x and y. x goes 0, 1, 2. y also goes 0, 1, 2. And I can create a mesh grid out of these arrays. So that's what I do here. And the command is very particular how you do this. You use numpy.meshgrid. That's the function you use from numpy. You feed in your two rays, x and y. These are like the axes, x-axis, y-axis, all the values. And it will create that square grid. And it returns two arrays. It returns xv and yv. These are two-dimensional arrays. And so if I look at xv, it looks like this. And I look at yv, it looks like this. And you might think, well, what, what are these arrays actually saying? Well, it's very specific, these arrays. xv is a 2D array. You can think of it like a map in space. And the number tells you where you are in X on that map. So for example, you could think of this as sort of being like a 2D map. And it says here I'm at X equals zero, here I'm at X equals one, and here I'm at X equals two. And I go down in Y, but I'm still at the same value of X. Here I'm at X equals zero, here I'm at X equals one, here I'm at X equals two. And it sort of repeats like that from each row, of course, because on each row, it's going to be the same thing of x repeated over and over and over again. That's sort of coordinates, right? You'd have the same x coordinate along a column if you're considering sort of a 2D map. A uh, y is the same, only it's sort of reversed. It says when I'm in that first row, every value is zero. If I go across a map, my y coordinate does not change as I move left and right, right? So that's what's happening here. And one, 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 and two, two, two. And from these two arrays, you can use NumPy functionality to do operations on them. So here I take my xv and yv, these are 2D arrays, and I can square them and add them together, which is exactly what I do here. So here I take xv squared plus yv squared, and it will take this squared plus this squared, 
and it returns that element here. And for example, it would take this squared plus this squared and return that here. So two squared plus one squared gives me five. And you can see that now it's doing these operations for coordinates on a grid. And you need this if you want to get a 2D function in return. So it can be done on a larger scale. So suppose I want to generate the function f of x, y is e to the negative x squared plus y squared, sort of a Gaussian decay. Uh, and x is negative two to two and y is negative one to one. I create my X array. I go from negative two to two in a hundred steps. So a hundred values between negative two and two. Same with Y. I use my commands to make a mesh grid, right? And so let's just look at the mesh grid first. And so my X V, but well now it's going to be a much longer array. So X V goes from negative two to two, negative two to two. It's always the same along rows. My X coordinate or my X coordinate changes as I go along rows but it's the same along columns. For example, I always have negative two, negative two, negative two. Next element is this, this, this along each column. And then of course you get the same pattern with YV as well. Each row is the same Y coordinate and it changes as you go down. I can feed these arrays in then to this function F. And so this is an operation occurring on 2D arrays. So it's a 2D array squared plus a 2D array squared. Uh, NumPy dot exponent, this is just E to the whatever power. Um, that can take in 2D array and it will return a 2D array. And then I can look at my F, uh, not G, my F here. And I have a corresponding 2D array where it takes the, the coordinates from each place in that array. The coordinates are given by X, V, and Y, V like a map and it returns a function. Then I can plot it. And by the way, you use P color mesh. If you're using matplotlib, it's the default best way to practice uh, plotting 2D plots. Uh, other options are M show and P color, but these take a little bit longer. And so here I use P color mesh. I give it my X mesh grid, my Y mesh grid, so it can get the axes labels correct, and then F, the actual function. And I can plot it like this, and I get my corresponding function and my color bar that gives sort of the, the magnitude of F is specified by the color. Uh, you can also create rectangular masks with mesh grid. So here I'm saying F of X, Y is one. If x squared plus y squared is less than one, so it should be like a circle, which by the way, you can see here, spoiler alert, and zero if x squared plus y squared is greater than one. And I want this in the uh, domain and range negative five to five in both x and y. This is really important if you have some image and you're looking at a specific region, you can create a mask for that region. So zero everywhere except one in a particular location of an image. And of course the location is specified by x and y. Same thing as before. Here, X and Y are actually the same, so I can just create them at the same time. X equals Y equals mp.lint space, 500 values between negative five and five. I create my mesh grid like before. And then my function, this is where it gets a little bit complicated. Well, I can, I can compute X V squared plus Y V squared. I get this value everywhere, right? So you can think of this as being everywhere in space. And then I say, well, I only want values where this is less than one. And that will give an array of trues or falses. For example, here will be false, 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 but in the center, the, the values in the center of the array will be true. So I plot this le less than one and I have falses, falses all on the outside and then trues in the center. And if I wanna turn this into numbers, all I have to do is surround this in brackets and convert it to float. So this everywhere it's a false will be a zero and a true will be a one. And I get this array here. So that's my F is this whole array like that. And then I can do the same things before I plot X, V, Y, V, and F. Uh, and I didn't run this cell. And I get my circle here in the center. So it's one in the center and zero elsewise. And if I multiply this array by some you know, complicated image, I get a mask on that image. I can select a particular area. So here's another example. Suppose I have a, a array um, that's saved in my computer somewhere. And I know that the pixel dimensions are 0 0.429 millimeters in length. Uh, how would I plot it, right? And I'll show you what I mean. So here I load the image. So I just have an image. It's just uh, pixel values like this, uh, different values. And I can plot it using P color mesh. And I get something like this, but my labels are off. These labels are in pixel values. This is zero and there's like, if I look at the shape of this image, you can see it's 512 by 512. So it's giving me my pixels on here and here. Suppose I wanna plot it so that it shows the X and Y dimensions. Well, for that, I can say, all right, I'm going to set dx equals dy is 0 0.429. And then I can uh, array, give an arrange array. So by the way, my image shape, m dot shape looks like this, 512 by 512. It's the same in this case. And so uh, x, what I'm doing here is I'm saying x is equal to this. 
and y is equal to this. That's the notation I'm using in Python. It automatically does that. So if I create an array like this, the m.shape1, it goes from 0 to 511. So there's 512 different values here. And if I multiply this by 0 0.429, then I get my sort of pixel spacing like that. So that's how I would do that. And so I can create an array of x and y like that. It's dx times this, dy times that. These are my x and y arrays. And then I specify my mesh grid. x, v, y, v is mesh grid x, y. Same thing I did before. Then I can create a color mesh plot where I feed in x, v, and y, v and my image. And I can plot it. And sure enough, my labels, well, if I run this cell uh, one more time, sure enough, my labels are indeed correct. I have units of millimeters, millimeters here. The way I did that was by creating a mesh grid and then feeding that into the plotting function.